Arms out, let's go. Due to the massive success of my How to Speed Run a Kea Heist in 30 Minutes video, we have over 1.2 million views, as well as my updated speedrun guide after the Tuners DLC I posted last year, I thought it was about time I went through a bit more detail in the finale to help you guys get the most money in the fastest possible way. I'll be going through the fastest approach, what to look out for, where to go, as well as the best ways to fill your loot bags in order for you to get that elite challenge bonus in the fastest possible time. I'll be showing you the best strategies for solo and two player co-op. Today I've managed the solo elite challenge in 4 minutes 47 as well as the aggressive approach solo elite in 6 minutes 44 and also the two player elite in 4 minutes 50 as well as the full heist world record on console with a time of 20 minutes and 38 seconds. If you'd like to check those out, links are in the description below. So without further ado, let's get to it. In order to complete the finale in the fastest, most effective way, you first want to locate your primary target and more importantly, your secondary loot. I will mark location. As a solo player, you're really after a painting or two in the office, as this will dramatically decrease your overall time. If none are available, only bother heading to the main docks and check out what you have here. You only need to scope out the large shed and the gated hut across the road. The other location will not be accessible as a solo player. Ideal secondary loot would be two stashes of coke, but if not, as long as there are three stacks of anything else, you should be good. Going anywhere else for the secondaries is simply not worth the time or hassle and will add many more minutes onto your overall time. There are really only two loadouts you want to choose from and they depend on whether you are on hard mode or normal mode and whether you will be doing it solo or as a co-op. When playing on hard mode as a solo player or co-op or normal mode as a co-op, you want the aggressor loadout which will give you the assault shotgun and the machine pistol. If you're playing on normal mode as a solo player, you want the conspirator loadout which gives you the military rifle and some sticky bombs. I will go into more detail about why you want this loadout in a bit. Far and away the fastest vehicle for the finale is the long fin boat. I won't be going into detail about the best way to do the preps here as they are all covered in my previous guide as mentioned before. When choosing your finale approach options, you want to choose the long fin for approach vehicle and then the top option for the other four, which is the main dock, drainage tunnel, airstrip and day. The drainage tunnel and airstrip options will make no difference for this run. Once the heist has started, there is a neat little time save here where you press the cinematic camera button as soon as the cutscene moves away from your character. Pressing it twice quickly will allow you to start moving your boat. A side by side here shows you the difference. When you're able to steer your boat, hold the L1 trigger on PlayStation to steer it more sharply to the right. Make sure to pull back on your trigger for maximum speed and steer away from the cliff edge, then to the very middle of this rock. The legendary long fin boat jump is all about practice. The weather and timing will make all the difference for a successful jump. If you mess it up, you can still give it another go, but messing it up twice means your boat will be too damaged and slow to complete it. No, no, do not worry, I shall be here. I will not miss this for anything. If you get the jump on your second attempt, it will mean that a patrolling guard in a jeep will arrive at around the same time. You can kill him and steal his vehicle. The long fin jump is the fastest way to the compound when playing on hard mode as a solo or co-op player. If you are playing solo on normal mode and you got the conspirator loadout, you'll have some sticky bombs. As you have an extra life on normal mode, when you arrive at the rock, chuck your sticky and blow yourself up. Well, well, you have done. This will spawn you right inside the compound grounds as the game will think you made it inside due to where you were when it was detonated. It's important to note that dying on normal mode will not invalidate the elite challenge. Now inside the compound grounds, head straight for the right side of the building. Here you will find three guards. Headshot each one until you find the door codes. 
then head to the door and get into first person. If neither of these guards has the codes, you'll have to try out some other nearby guards. This is highly dependent on good RNG. Remember, cameras everywhere. Almost like Mr. Rubio feels a little paranoid sometimes. Good, side gate. For this part, I'll talk you through the compound first as a solo player. When inside the compound, turn right at the panther cage and headshot this guard. A good run will mean him having the gate keys to access the basement for the primary target. What happens next? We go underground. Whether he has them or not, hop this wall and head upstairs and kill the next guard. Don't need me to tell you what happens next. We go underground. It's important that you shoot him either before or on the stairs, as doing so on this landing means alerting the guard underneath. Be careful in this area. Mr. Rubio's personal bodyguards, they know their soldiers and they will know you are not one of them, no matter what you know what you are wearing. And therefore, failing the elite challenge. This guard may also have the gate keys. Head into the office to grab either the artwork, you're in the area where Mr. Rubio's personal bodyguards operate, or just the cash in a Rubio safe. You have good taste in things to steal. Always worth looking in the safe. Then depending on where the guard below is situated, depends on how you may want to get down. Always worth looking in the safe. If you've already got the gate keys, you can go straight to the basement. There are a total of five guards who may have the gate keys. The optimal route for making sure you get the gate keys in the fastest possible way is this. Kill the first guard here, then upstairs for guard two. Watch out for the Mr. Rubio's personal bodyguard. Back downstairs for guard three. Then guard four is the one walking around by the camera. If you still haven't picked them up, then take out these two by the pool. Obviously, the moment you pick up the keys, you don't need to carry on killing the others. Just head straight to the basement by hopping this wall. You always want to go this way as it means saving time on the way out as the gate is already open. Down the stairs and spam right on your D-pad to access the hacking. Hacking the fingerprints is another one that requires some basic know-how and practice. Another fingerprint scanner here. Each fingerprint section will correlate to a number. The first hack will mean changing up to the first four sections. Hack 2 is up to the first five sections. Simply start each section with the fingerprint tip and then click right in regards to what section you are on. For example, click right once on section 2, click right twice on section 3 and click right three times on section 4. Do this for each fingerprint and you're in. Aiming your weapon here and strafing right gets you through the gate faster. Now jump the stairs and burn through the lock. When cutting the glass, hold the cutting trigger until it reaches 95%, then release it until it gets down to about 15%. Do this four times and the glass is cut. My uncle. If you have the safe code, then click down to get to numbers 50 to 99 and up for numbers 1 to 49. Repeat this for each three numbers. Cracking the safe is the fastest primary target to get by approximately 7 seconds. Head out and jump down the stairs and exit out of the gate to the right Very deep level. before hopping this wall right next to the beige pillar. Head to the main gate and you're out.
Once outside, unless you were lucky enough to get the two paintings in the office, you need to head to the main docks to fill your bag. The compound is behind us, and they still have no idea what's hit them. We are almost home. Just get out of there. Knock out this guard, then shoot the next two. Ah! Ah! Exit route via the airstrip is on your GPS now. Hop on a bike and under the camera. Then take this tricky route through the bushes. Well, well, judging from their comms, it sounds like Mr. Rubio is reaching for his helicopter again. At the large shed, take this guard out and then the camera. After you've burned the log, jumping through it is a bit faster. Collect what you need here, and maybe even a hut opposite if you need to, taking out anyone in your way. It's important to know that if you get alerted outside the compound at this point, it will not invalidate your elite challenge. Everything went smoothly until we realized how heavy is a brick of plutonium. Very heavy. Take my advice. You need to run fast. Now jump in a boat and sail off. The water is full of attack boats. You will need to be careful. <laughs> this one here with a Rubio safe money, office painting and coke at the main docks was completed in under seven minutes. But my best time with two office paintings elite challenge is 4 minutes 47. So that is the best solo player strategy, so now onto the two player co-op. You always want to do the boat jump, as killing yourself on normal mode won't allow both players to spawn in the compound grounds. It's the same strategy and route as solo towards the side entrance. And now you're in. When inside, you will split up to maximize your chances of picking up the two key cards you need in order to access the secondary loot in the compound. Player one heads right at the Panther Cage, pops this wall, this all looks familiar, yes? and blasts the juggernaut with the assault shotgun. Rubio has for us this time. Then takes out this guard. Always worth in the safe. This guard might have key card one. If not, keep heading forward, then right to kill these two, who also might have it. If you're still unlucky, head up to kill this guard, then over to the far side stairs to kill this guard. If it's not any of these four, a fast run is screwed and you need to start murdering everyone else until you find them. If you manage to get the keycard early enough, kill the guard walking around under the camera to help find the gate keys. Player 2's route is the same route as the solo player, killing this guard then upstairs to grab the key card, which will always be in El Rubio's office. Be careful in this area, Mr. Rubio's personal bodyguards. <laughs> then down to the basement. From now on, depending on where the best secondary loot is, depends where you both go next. Welcome back. You just need to stick together from now on. And your best option is three gold stacks or maybe one player grabbing two paintings. It's worth noting that the secondary access here has changed a few times with certain DLCs. When it first came out, every door needed two players to open it. Then it's changed to just one, and after the contract DLC, it's now back to two players again. Just because you are fleeing the crime scene of the century does not mean there is no time for opportunistic theft, yes? You like it, you take it. Now outside, one player kills the first guard to the left and takes his bike. The compound is done. The only thing left to do is escape. Carry on like this and they will never know you were there. The other player turns right, killing these three, like during the solo run. and steals this bike.
because you now don't need to go to the main docks, you head past the Rubio's Chopper, down this grassy slope, then really as far as you can off the edge of this cliff. Swim towards the three sea mines and the heist is finished. The water is full of attack boats. You will need to be careful. A lot of your runs will depend on RNG and what secondary loot you have, but hopefully you now have enough information and tactics as a base to work from. I'd love to know your fastest times or whether you've learned anything new to make you even faster. If you found this video useful, please drop it a like and maybe consider subscribing for more. I'm Beats Down and I'll see you in the next one.